Hey there, my name is Bill Marion and this is A Nose for Life. This video is kind of special because it's the beginning of a new playlist for our channel that we're calling Better Outdoor Adventures. And yes, that's also the name of this video. While making videos of our outdoor adventures over the past several years and sharing these adventures with you here on YouTube, we've learned a few things that might help you improve your own personal adventures. Now, most of the time, our adventures are outdoors. Carol and I spend a lot of time running around the mountains. But if you've been watching our videos for a while, you already know that we can end up in anywhere. In this video, I'm going to show you something that we do that really helps us find some amazing places and have better adventures. But for this video and this video playlist, the focus is going to be on the outdoors. You're going to love the variety of breathtaking scenery in the beautiful mountains of Virginia in this video, so be sure to stick around to the end. And if you have some ideas to improve outdoor adventures, let us know in the comments. Carolyn and I love being spontaneous, but sometimes being spontaneous is limiting. Let's say you want to go hiking, but you don't get a chance to get away until late in the afternoon. Well, your options are then limited. Making matters even more difficult is when you really want to do something, but it might take a little extra effort to get to a specific location, and even then you don't know what you're getting into until you're already into it. Carolyn and I spend a lot of time on Skyline Drive. A couple of weeks ago, we released a video covering the entire Skyline Drive in one day. I'll leave a link to that video at the end of this video. You'll want to check it out if you love mountaintop scenery. But over the past four years visiting Skyline Drive, we kept passing by this amazing mountain. It's stunning. Now, as I've mentioned in several videos, Skyline Drive is in Shenandoah National Park, and Skyline Drive is the only road that runs through the park. And obviously, this mountain isn't on this road. But look at it. It's so amazing, and I want to know more about it. So here are some things I need to find out. First, what's the name of the mountain? Second, is the mountain in the National Park boundary? And if so, how do I get there? And finally, if I can get there, what kind of trails are awaiting me? See, it's one thing to find out how to get there, but it's another thing to figure out that you have to be the Incredible Hulk to climb the trails. But first, let's find the name of this mountain. <laughs> Now this first thing might seem a little boring, but trust me, it really, really helps and it saves so much time and inconvenience. It's probably the most important thing on this list. When you're wanting to get the most out of an outdoor adventure, you need to do a map recon of your destination. So let's take this mountain that I'm wanting to visit. It's easy to determine where I'm at on Skyline Drive. There are mile markers and overlooks with names. It's not a straight line, but it's north and south. You're going one way or the other. Using a map and compass, the one on your phone works just fine, I can determine the name of this amazing mountain. First, if you don't have cell service to access your maps, then you'll really need a map of the area that includes the name of the major terrain features. Also, you have to know where you're at on the map. If you're someplace like Skyline Drive or Blue Ridge Parkway, that's not going to be a problem. But there is an easy way to determine your location with a map, compass, and some 6th grade math, but I'm saving that for another video down the road. For now, we're taking it easy because 6th grade math was a long time ago. Anyway, mark where you are on the map or just eyeball it. In this situation, you don't have to be exact. Orient your map north and south. Point your compass toward the mountain and then take note of the direction and follow that direction on the map. Okay, listen, if you know a thing or two about land navigation, you know I left a lot of information out. And for others, what I just said might seem complicated. But honestly, it's as simple as lining the map up right, finding the direction of the train feature with your compass and following that same direction on a properly oriented map. And here's the thing, even if your map doesn't have the name of the mountain, if you line up the map and mark it, you can look at it online later or ask a park ranger. But here's the thing, in certain wilderness areas or national parks, you'll get a map when you enter the park. You get a map when you enter Shenandoah National Park. And the name of this mountain is listed there. In fact, here it is. And using the park map, this is how I learned the name of this mountain a little over three years ago when visiting the park for the first time. My point is, is that there is so much you can learn about a potential outdoor destination if you take the time to study a map before you go. You can learn a lot of interesting information that might help you make plans. And it's always best if you use some kind of terrain or actual topographic 
topographic maps so you'll know what you're getting into. And this really helps when navigating mountain back roads as well, and I'll cover some tips to help you with back roads in some other video. Taking the time to study terrain can really help you make better decisions before you ever walk out the door. Now the name of this mountain is Old Rag. Don't blame me, I didn't name it. And yes, it is in the National Park boundary, and just by looking at the map, I was able to determine a few things. First, technically, you can hike there from Skyline Drive, but that's a long way to hike, and I'm thinking a day hike for this. I also see the Old Rag Ranger Station and a parking lot. But obviously, we must leave Skyline Drive and Shenandoah National Park to get to this ranger station that's in Shenandoah National Park. And using a map, I can figure out what route I'm going to use to get to this parking lot if I choose this adventure. And by the way, you can't always rely on your map app when driving to locations like this for a variety of reasons. I've talked about that a lot in other videos. Honestly, it's best not to trust your apps in the wilderness at all. But there are times like this where it works okay. A few years ago, when I went through the process I'm sharing with you in this video, I found it so interesting that there are hiking access points to Shenandoah National Park that are not on Skyline Drive. More on that later in this video. One thing that should be obvious while looking at this awesome mountain and just glancing at the contour lines, this is going to be a steep hike. Now listen, if this is the only thing you do before jumping into any outdoor adventure, look at a map and get some general information and it will save you so much time. And you'll be surprised at what you can learn. A map recon is essential. And this applies to any kind of vacation. If you're going to Gatlinburg, Myrtle Beach, Colorado, know where you're going. It'll really help. but you also need some intelligence. And that's where the internet comes in. So you're wanting to hike Old Rag because, well, look at it. It's amazing. And you've looked at the map and it seems really cool. It's a little steep and that route to get there seems interesting too. Let's see what the internet says. Okay, let's be honest. The internet has been around long enough for us to say this without hurting anyone's feelings. Basing your outdoor adventure on the recommendation of a website, including YouTube, including my channel, is risky. I'm not talking about fake news or anything like that. I'm just talking about different strokes for different folks. Look, when I hike in national parks, I often run into serious professional hikers. I call them hiking snobs. They're usually tall with abnormally long legs and they're bone skinny. They pass me like I'm an injured animal about to be overtaken by Bigfoot or something. Yes, upon occasion, I use websites that rate trails, but I'm careful. The thing about hiking websites rating trails easy or hard is, well, according to who? I've been on trails declared moderate that were kind of easy to me, and trails that were rated as moderate that I thought were extremely difficult. Look, if you're in a dedicated hiking community, Community, good for you, and I'm sorry I called your kind a snob. It's nothing personal. I just don't trust the rating system. Anyway, despite the internet being, well, the internet, you can still get some great information from the internet if you put the time in. And if you're visiting a national park, check the website. Links are in the description for this area. When we first looked into Old Rag Mountain, this is what we learned from the national park website. Featuring hikes with adventurous rock scrambles and 360 degree views that make you feel like you're on top of the world, there's no wonder why Old Rag is the most popular destination in Shenandoah National Park. Wow, I guess I'm not the only one that thinks that this mountain is pretty cool looking. It's the most popular destination in Shenandoah National Park. While highly rewarding, Hiking to the summit of Old Rag is also very physically demanding and can be dangerous if you have not planned properly. In order to ensure your safety and make the most out of your hike, be sure that you understand the basics of hiking safety before you set out on your adventure. Rock scrambles? I'm not going through every website I checked other than the National Park, but knowing how steep this hike will be and knowing there is some rock scrambling, well, that means Carolyn is out. Nope. That's just not her thing. If I hike this mountain, it's going to be a solo trip. And for three years, that's been the kicker. I'd rather be on an adventure with Carolyn.
Case closed. But there are those times when our schedules just don't allow us to make a video together. So for the past three years, it's just been one option of many. Now this is the second step, gathering intelligence via the internet or someone you know specifically who's been to that location. Now this process takes longer and it takes more consideration. So again, before any outdoor adventure, you need to make time for a map recon. But if you have an extra hour or so before you make a decision and head out the door, gather some intelligence. The map recon and the intelligence we gathered prevented us from making a decision that may have been disastrous. But there's a date on my calendar that looks like I'm going to be making a solo video. And I had a decision to make. And making this decision required yet another final step. And this final step is what prompted this video. So you've made an assessment based on the map and you've spent some time gathering intelligence. But this is an important decision and you want to get it right. You might be thinking, how can this decision be that important? Well, let me explain what you run into. For example, if I'm making a solo video, I want to take you somewhere memorable. Yes, I've been making videos on amazing mountain trails that weren't exactly special before, but I'd rather take you somewhere that's really amazing. And on this trip, I'll be hiking alone which I love, but I have to be careful. I'm a diabetic and I have a lot of metal in my leg. Trust me, metal detectors love me. So I have to really think about where I'm hiking. I also ask myself, what do I want to see? What do I want to capture on video? Sometimes I want to see creeks along the way and other times I'm all about walking the ridge line and enjoying the view. And you may have your own reasons for really wanting to know the lay of the land or really wanting this amazing outdoor adventure to be special. You need eyes on the target. So if you've taken the first two steps and you have time to do this as well, you're going to have an amazing outdoor adventure. Let me explain. You're looking for certain clues that this is really worth your time. So you actually drive to your destination and maybe walk around a little bit, look at the trail, study the lay of the land, and you can learn quite a bit. Now that's a lot of effort, but it's going the extra mile to make things a little more convenient. See, the map may indicate that the trail isn't steep, but when you get to the trail, you notice that it's extremely rocky and maybe you can't do rocks. And here's an easy one. The map looks good, the intelligence is good, and when you get to the parking lot, you learn that the trail is closed and the internet didn't say that or the map doesn't say that. Yes, that's happened to me. And if it's a really special trip, like maybe you're taking your fiance on a nice hiking adventure to a mountaintop to propose, but then you get to the trailhead and the trail's closed, well, that could really ruin your moment. And when we're able, we take it even a step further. What you've been watching is the video we captured while gathering as much information about this area as possible to determine which trail I was going to hike in Shenandoah National Park. We've never been in this area. We've never been to the east side of the park. So this really is new to us. Instead of driving straight to Old Rag Mountain Ranger Station, we began exploring the different roads that lead to the foot of the ridgeline, knowing from looking at the map earlier, as in years earlier, that there are national park trails in this area. It may seem strange, but we didn't see any signs leading to these access points. Come to think of it, there are quite a few strange things about the access points and the confusing boundaries in this area between private property and the park, but that's for another video. While exploring these roads, knowing that I was very close to Old Rag Mountain, we stumbled here, White Oak Canyon Trailhead. When I stepped out of the truck, I knew this was going to be an awesome discovery, but I didn't know how good. The whole idea of this recon trip was to get to know the area a little bit. Remember, I've been wanting to hike Old Rag for a while now, and we're close to Old Rag at this location. I kept looking for the unique mountain, but I couldn't identify it on the ridgeline. But it turns out, we were practically under Old Rag. We parked in the White Oak Canyon parking area. White Oak Canyon is known for being one of, if not the best location in the state of Virginia for waterfalls. All of the creeks and spills in this video were captured in the parking area or in the general vicinity of White Oak Canyon. And from what I've heard, as pretty as these little creeks are, it's nothing compared to what's just up the trail. Just like I recommended earlier in the video, I walked on the trail for about 20 minutes just to see what I was in for, and sure enough, I loved it. It was settled. The next video was going to be my adventure hiking White Oak Canyon. But before we left the area, I wanted to follow the road just a little more, so we hopped back in the truck and took off down the road and found another trailhead, Berry Hollow. Thank you. 
and would you look at that. From this location, I can hike to Old Rag and save a little time and energy, and for me, it might be a little safer. But think about this for a second. Using a map, I missed it. And using the internet, I missed it, even though I don't know how, I mean, it's right there. But on this trip, using what I did know from the map and from a little surface level Googling, I was able to find some key information here in the area to plan a better outdoor adventure. And as much as I wanna see White Oak Canyon's amazing waterfalls, I've been waiting to hike Old Rag since we've lived in Virginia Virginia, and this newly discovered trail, at least new to me, well, that's the ticket. And that will be our next video, so be sure you're subscribed and that you've clicked the bell for notifications. But trust me, you're going to see White Oak Canyon in a video down the road. Anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. We had a great time putting it together. Allegedly, this tree right here. Now, I say allegedly because I, I can't prove this, but this is what this is what the locals say, is that Stonewall Jackson, General Jackson, used to pray right here at this tree. So it's called Jackson's Praying Tree. Is that right? Jackson's Praying Tree. And also, people have taken a lot of the timber that's fallen off over the years, and they've made knives out of it and all this stuff commemorating General Jackson's Praying Tree. Just saying. Sadly, Stonewall Jackson was shot by his own troops. It's kind of sad, but yeah, that's what happened. Be sure to leave a comment. My name is Bill Marion, and this is A Nose for Life. Hey, if you like this video, I'm sure you'll like one of these videos as well.